What does that even mean, Bowers Game Corner? Oh, hi there, YouTube. I'm back again today for another game review charge by BoardGameExchange.com, the internet's only board game rental website. And today, I am very excited to be checking out Phil the Barn from Hoop Cat Games. This is for two to four players, ages eight and up. It'll take you about 30 minutes to play this bad boy. And in Phil the Barn, you will be trying to fill a barn with different fruits and vegetables and produce and trying to survive droughts and make the most money before the barn is filled when the game ends. Is it good? Is it bad? I don't know. Let's open it up and see how it plays. Boom! Fill the barn from Hoopcat Games. What are you going to get inside? First and foremost, you're going to get your handy dandy rule booklet. Eight pages, double sided, full color, very well done. It's a simple game, but a lot of companies screw up simple rule booklets for simple games. Hoopcat Games did not. Thumbs up. Next, you're going to get your money. It is paper money. I know some people don't like that, but pretty standard paper money. You got hundreds, five hundreds, and thousands. That's what you'll be using as currency and to help decide who's the winner of the game because the end of the game, whoever has the most money, is going to be the winner. Next, you're going to get your board. It is very bright. It's bright, nice colors, very vivid, uh, very nice little board. Uh, can't about it at all. Next you're going to get your cards. First off I want to mention they give you some blank cards. I love when companies give you blank cards. Why? Because if you want to make house rules or something like that, you can. So like that a lot. Phil the Barn has those. But the, the cards are the heart of the game. So we're going to take a look at what kind of cards you're going to get. So first and foremost you're going to get your crops because what you're going to be doing in this game is planting crops and then putting them into the barn for money. So, for instance, I'm going to plant these carrots, it would cost me $300, so I have to pay $300 to plant the carrots. Then I would have to harvest them, which I would put them into the barn, and you put them at the very top. So, for instance, if I can get these carrots into the barn, it's going to cost me $300 to plant them, but if I can get them into the barn, it will gain me $1,200, so I'd get $1,200. But if somebody already filled up this spot, I'd have to go down here, which I would gain $1,000. But if somebody's already filled that spot, I would get $800, and if all the spots are filled with tough cookies, you can't put it in the barn. But that's your plants and your vegetables and whatnot. Next, you're going to have junk, which you'll be using strategically to block the barn. So say you got a lot of strawberries, you don't want anybody to put strawberries in there, you can block it, and, and there's also a card that will let you remove junk. So if you have a junk card and a remove junk card, you could definitely use that strategically strategically. Next, you are going to get your harvest card. This is one of the best cards in the game, personally. It is a free harvest, which is awesome, but they range from like 100 to 500, I think, and this just lets you take your carrots or what have you and put them into the barn because you have to harvest them. Uh, next, you have mice and drought. These are kind of like attack cards, so you can attack other people. The mice let you remove one harvest from the barn. This one, Actually, this one's not really an attack card, I guess, but it's more of a strategic card. So, for instance, uh, if somebody put on the strawberry on the 2000 and you have a strawberry you want to put in there, you might say, all right, the mice are going to eat all the strawberries in there, and then you can put yours in there the next turn. The drought is the attack card, though. Other players lose any non irrigated fields. This one is a real bummer because all the fields you have in front of you are now gone unless they're irrigated, which is another card. Uh, there's also a lot of these pass left, pass left, pass right, look at somebody's card, one card, and then uh, take one of their cards kind of things. There's a lot of various different cards, and I'm not going to go over all of them, but those for, uh, for the most part are the main kind of cards you're going to get. So, let's take a look at a mock hand. You're going to get five cards, you're going to start with $1,500. So, let's see, this guy's got, he's got a couple cards, he doesn't have anything in particular, he's got a $400 harvest card, which really kind of stinks. Oh, he's got strawberries. The strawberries are the most expensive, so he's obviously going to plant his strawberries. So, he's going to say, alright, I'm going to plant my strawberries first turn. So, he's going to lay those down in front of him, and he's going to pay $600 to the bank. Once you have played your one card, you're going to draw one more card and put it in your hand. You got $300 potatoes. So this guy's going to take a look at what he's got. He's got, oh, he's got strawberries too. But he's like, all right, somebody is already getting strawberries. He's got free carrots because some of these things let you plant them for free. And he's like, should I do the free carrots? Should I do the $500 watermelon? He's got a lot of different options. But he'd probably go with, uh, he'd probably go with, well, see, this is where the math comes into the game. So, for instance, if he's he doesn't have any way of harvesting, which kind of stinks. So he probably we're just going to assume he goes with the free carrot. So he's going to put those down in front of him. Doesn't pay any money, which is awesome. And then he's going to draw another card. He got more carrots, which kind of stinks. But anyway, let's see what this guy's going to do. 
he is probably going to, I don't know, maybe he'll plant, uh, maybe he'll plant this hundred dollar hay. So he's going to plant that down, he's going to pay a hundred, and then he's going to draw another card. Free potatoes, that's a great card. So this guy is going to look at his cards, he's got his free pair, he's got his free carrots down there. He's going to say, all right, I'm going to go for this watermelon, so he's going to plant watermelon for 500. Either way, eventually this guy would end up harvesting, he's going to pay $400 to harvest, which kind of stinks. But what he's going to do is he's going to harvest the strawberry, put it right here to block that spot in the barn, discard that card, and then he will gain $2,000. And you're going to keep doing that until all the spots in the barn are filled. At the end of the game, whoever has the most money is the winner. And that is how Fill the Barn is played. Okay, Fill the Barn from Hoop Cat Games. What are my final thoughts? Let's go over the pros. Let's go over the cons. First, on the con side, some of the cards felt kind of unnecessary. I didn't really use them at all, and I still won or finished in second most of the time. Uh, the drought card kind of felt unnecessary to me. It just seemed like it was more pointless to attack than to just plant my crops. Also, the bug card is in the same boat. The irrigation card felt really useless to me. Like It's like, am I really going to waste a turn and pay 350 to do this when I could just plant instead and hopefully no one will do a drought? I didn't use them, and I don't really think you need to use them to win the game. I, I really think they could have redone that in a better way, the drought and the bugs and all that stuff. Uh, also, the game's not going to be for everybody because it, it, it is not a huge, deep strategy game. There is some elements of strategy to this game if you're, uh, if you're younger, but if you are a regular adult and you are having a game night, Phil the Barn is probably not going to scratch the itch that you have. Um, Last thing is it has paper money. I personally don't care. I don't mind paper money, but I know some people absolutely loathe paper money. It makes them want to rip their hair out, but it does have paper money. Moving on to the pro side of Fill the Barn, I really enjoyed my time with this game. And I can highly recommend this game if, this is a big if, you are looking for a family game. Fill the Barn, and, and I, I don't know this for a fact, but I have a feeling this was built from the ground up to be a family game. And it is absolutely, positively, one of the better family games I have played, because it, it does a couple things that are really good in a family game. First and foremost, it's fun. Your kids, it, it's, it doesn't outweigh, outstay its welcome. It's easy to teach, which is awesome. Also, the rule booklet's very nicely done. All the components are very nice, aside from the money, if you don't like paper money. But it's easy to teach, easy to play, easy to put away, and it's a lot of fun. But the great part is it teaches a lot of math because you will constantly be trying to figure out, all right, how much, I gonna, how much am I going to make if I plant this and then I harvest this as opposed to planting this and harvesting this? All right, I'll make 1500 if I do this, but I'll make 2500 if I do this, and I'll make 400 if I do this, but you know, nobody's probably going to do this. You have to be constantly, there's going to be juggling a lot of numbers. Now, if you're an adult, it's really that, that difficult. But if you were a kid, this is really going to be a very nice stepping stone to more complex games. So, if you are looking to play this with your children, you eventually want to get them into more complex games like Power Grid or what have you, this is a fantastic part or not party game family game that i can highly recommend overall fill the barn from hoop cat games is a game that i really enjoyed and that i can't wait to play with my kids when they get older if you enjoyed this review please be sure to subscribe to my channel thanks for your time youtube that was the review for fill the barn for more reviews and previews check back at bowers game corner also check out boardgameexchange.com the nationwide board game rental service